Big day in college basketball in the Big 12 with UCF and BYU tipping things off at 1230 Eastern, 1030 over in the mountains where you live. Uh, first and foremost, before we get into every single one of these matchups, Brett Yomark has made it clear that the Big 12 tournament will stay in Kansas City to, through 2031. Guess what? Guess what? You ready for this? You ready for this? I don't really care. It would be cool to see it in Memphis. We already get football in Arlington, so it's like, eh. It would be cool to see it in Vegas. I think a basketball tournament in Vegas would be awesome. I think Memphis, all you guys crap on Memphis, or even Nashville, though the SEC does it there, so maybe you can't. I just think that's a little more centralized for like a West Virginia or UCF, and I get it. A lot of you are ticked off that every year it's like Kansas gets a home court advantage in, in Kansas City. But guess what? And here's what I think is a really important part of this. Who cares? Who cares? The winner of the Big 12 tournament typically doesn't go on to win the national championship. The winner of any conference tournament typically doesn't go on to win the national championship. Unless you are a UCF, a Cincinnati, a Kansas State right now, I wouldn't care about anything to do with this tournament. And I know that's a weird way to look at this. And that's how I'm going to segue that in the BYU thing here, because I had a guest on the show yesterday who said the exact opposite. He said, win the games in front of you. In my opinion, same as UConn, who lost to Marquette last year in their conference tournament. I, I understand. Win your games, you know, like, oh, why go into March Madness on a loss? Well, because history tells us to, by the way. That's why that's who win the national championships are the ones who lose their conference tournament. Uh, I, I just, sure, if your idea, I've just seen a lot of Houston fans, and even BYU fans saying they want to win these games, your idea of, of rest is winning, then fine. I just, I've seen teams, and every team has a different circumstance. Kansas needs to lose to Cincinnati today. I hope Kansas loses to Cincinnati, literally for Kansas' sake. They're going to go much deeper in the tournament, and maybe Cincinnati gets into the tournament with a win against a top-20 team. With that being said, I I don't know that BYU like needs to win. The only thing, like if I if I am, here's what I would do. I would use this to play around and move some guys around and say, look, here are a couple of guys who haven't started or don't typically start. Let's put them in the starting five and see what happens. Let's give some, uh, some of our bench guys some extra minutes. What if that one random kid on the end of our bench hits threes like nobody's business? He nails five of them and we learn something new about our team. You couldn't really figure that out in the Big 12 regular season because you're fighting for March. But guess what? The teams that need to bolster their resume aren't necessarily doing it in their conference tournament if they're on the upper half of that conference. For like a BYU, if you beat UCF, I don't know that much really changes. And if you lose to UCF, guess what the talking heads on ESPN are going to say? Well, it's a Big 12 tournament. They didn't need to win this game. If you didn't need to win it, you don't need to win it. What's the point in playing it? Okay, fine. Go win a Big 12 tournament if you want to. I just don't. The one team I've seen, I've seen win a national championship up close and personal in the Big 12 was Baylor, and they lost the Big 12 tournament. Same for Kansas. Oklahoma and TCU today. This is a must win for neither team, technically. I think both these squads are in the NCAA tournament. They've each reached 20 wins in the Big 12. Though Oklahoma is 8-10 and 10 in Big 12 play. This would drop them overall to three games below 500, though that record won't exactly count. Going into March, um, I, I just... Personally, Oklahoma left the conference. So I'm going to favor TCU here and ask the Horn Frogs politely to win this game and try to get better seating. I cannot stress enough the difference in in an eight seed and a seven seed, or a or an eight seed and a six seed. That is one of those. It's like, ooh, you really, you know, like a two and a three to me is really a, a kind of a coin flip. It's like, oh, okay, well, you're just going to play each other. So oh, sweet, nice. Uh, when it comes to a seven, you get out of playing the number one overall seed in the round of 32. And I think that's really good. When you get to a six, you're really sitting a lot. You're sitting much prettier uh, looking at what your path could be moving forward. Though you do get a three buried in there. So I, I just think for TCU, bolt, they need to bolster a resume. They don't need to lose. They're one of these teams in the Big 12. There's a handful of them that don't need to lose. For Oklahoma, the only reason I'm not saying that about you and not rooting for you to win is you're leaving the conference. I do like Oklahoma a lot more than Texas, though. I like the fans, too. I like the Oklahoma listeners. They're good people. Speaking of Texas, Texas and Kansas State today. This game's at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Same deal. I mean, the Wildcats and Cincinnati's in the same boat, too. You you have to win these games. If Cincinnati loses today, they are out of the NCAA tournament. They did not reach the 20 win threshold in the Big 12, which I think if you do, you can make it to March for Kansas State. If you lose today, drop to 18 and 14. Congrats. You're going to be a really good NIT team. 
But boy, I think the last thing Jerome Tang and company need after a tumultuous season where even President Linton and, and all the executives at Kansas State got in the way of what could have been a really good season with Naquan Tomlin leading the way. With all of that said, I think if you go to the NIT, it's kind of a slap in the face. So beat Texas and, and go to March. If you do beat Texas, you've got a real shot to make some sort of magical conference tournament run. I mean, they've beaten Iowa State within the last week. They beat West Virginia a couple of weeks ago in a game that was tight, but there's a conference win. They beat BYU. That's a really good conference win. But they had that non-competitive game against Kansas that a lot of people can get out of their mind, especially after they beat Kansas early in the year. And it's like, oh, where's Tyler Perry? And, and that is it. If Kansas State's going to beat Texas today, which I hope they do, Tyler Perry is going to have to be that guy. Can he do it? I haven't seen it a lot. Wasn't even big all Big 12 third team, which is shocking. Um, just needed more out of him. Needed and you need it today. For Cincinnati against Kansas, I know, I know. The world will tell you that Cincinnati should win this game because Kansas is resting Kevin McCuller. Kansas is resting Hunter Dickinson. And I honestly think the world is correct. I think Cincinnati does beat Kansas for the betterment of Kansas. And my, my whole point here, Bill Self is resting players because he understands that he doesn't need to win the Big 12 tournament. He doesn't win, need to win a game in the Big 12 tournament, and he's still going to be okay. So you know what that means? By, by Bill Self saying, I don't need to do this, he is saying, that's, that translates to, it's a synonym of, I don't really care about winning in the Big 12 tournament. And if the greatest coach, active coach in college basketball, doesn't really care about winning the Big 12 tournament, why should you, right? Like all these people who have been, you know, I, I agree that there, I, mean, I get the pushback and I think there are some good points on why you should win in this, in Kansas City for a team like a TCU. But for many of you, Bill Self included, like you're arguing with Bill Self, which all of us have done in a time or two. Uh, the officials sure haven't. They don't, I just, you know, when the greatest coach in active coach in college basketball says do it, you do it. And they're going to do it. They're going to lose to Cincinnati and good for Cincinnati. Now you've got an even better shot at making March 20 and 13. Give me 10 teams, possibly 11 from the greatest conference in college basketball history. Coming up, Cincinnati got it done last night. And so did UCF. Is there any way we can sneak UCF in? There is one way. And for Cincinnati, are you a lock at this point? Can you become a lock? This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is where I go to make money. I went and I made money on FanDuel last night. You know what I will do live on this very show? I will go in and tell you exactly what I did on FanDuel or FanDuel to make money last night. So the easiest thing to do is go to the app, FanDuel app, or the FanDuel website. You type in your login credentials, as I'm doing right here, and you say, huh, last night I had a three-team parlay. They'll show you your history and whether or not that bet hit. I can already see, based on my account balance, that it did. And the reason it did is because that had Cincinnati money line, NC State money line, and I own a money line. The odds on that were $35 to win $25. And I got $25. It was that easy at FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. And right now is the best time to join FanDuel because a $5 money line bet on any team that wins gets you $150 in bonus bets. That's right. Effectively free play from FanDuel, a $5 bet on your favorite team to win. If they do win, then you get that money back. So go in, bet on Cincinnati today against Kansas. You can win money the same way that I did yesterday on Cincinnati winning in the Big 12 tournament. Trust me. It's fun. Fandle.com forward slash locked on. Fandle.com forward slash locked on. Visit that site or the app today. 